friends, welcome back to my channel. I am really excited because today I am announcing the winner of my 60,000 subscriber giveaway. Thank you so much to all of you who took the time to leave comments. I loved reading them and I can't wait to take some time. I'm going to make a big cup of tea or coffee or glass of wine depending on the time of day and respond to each of you. Um, I just really, really enjoyed reading your comments. It's so nice to get to know you all a little bit better. Now I did use a program to draw a name out of all the comments and I'm very excited to announce that the winner is drum roll please Valerie Zimmerman from Missouri. So congratulations, Valerie. I am so happy for you. Now I have been putting together a box of goodies that I'm gonna pop out in the mail. So I will message you, Valerie, to get your mailing address. Uh, I have picked up so far some chocolates made here uh, while in Anaganish, which isn't too far from where I live, uh, piece by chocolate. So it's a family from Syria that has come uh, to Anaganish, Nova Scotia and started up their chocolate business here again and there's a movie out about them their chocolates are delicious so I have some of their chocolate bars I have some other treats I have some uh, Stampin up logo items a tumbler a lunch bag some shopping bags that you can use to put your groceries in um, just some other different things now this past weekend I had planned on going to our local market to get some um, locally made maple syrup and some beautiful little gifts from our local artisans and there's some other things I want to surprise you with Valerie but it got so cold here this weekend it got down to minus 42 with the wind chill 42 did not leave the house <laughs> stayed home where it was nice and cozy and warm with our wood stove so I will be venturing out this week to uh, or this weekend to go to the market and get some of these extra things that I want to uh, to send to you Valerie so I hope you enjoy them and congratulations and again thank you to each and every one of you who is part of my YouTube family I just I'm I just love you all I really do so today I am going to show you how you can create a really easy box to store your greeting cards so this is something I have shown over the years at my stamp clubs and classes and everybody loves them and they're super easy to make so I thought this would be something fun because I've never shown it on my YouTube channel so without further ado let's start stamping it has been so long since I actually made one of these boxes I <laughs> I had to take one apart to figure out the measurements for you guys look at the paper um, so it's been a while but I had just one um, I had a printout with the tutorial on this and I have lost it I didn't have it on my computer at all I've had it for years and years and years could not find it um, and I really wanted to make um, one of these boxes to share with you so you can make some at home but I also want to make one for my mother-in-law for her birthday next month so hopefully she's not watching this all right so easy peasy you won't believe this and then you can like keep it as simple as you want when you decorate it or step it up I am going to make this box using evening evergreen I have actually gone ahead and made myself templates so that um, I <laughs> will always have the instructions from now on moving forward. So I will take photos of these and post them on my um, blog for you and I'll have the link for, you for that listed down below. Okay, so this is the first piece that I'm going to be making right now. Okay, so this measures eight and a half by 11. And I am going to score this down at the four and a half mark. So I'm going to score it and then I'm going to score at two and a half along the 11 inch side on both sides of this cardstock. Okay, so I've scored at four and a half, spun it around and along the 11 inch side I've scored at two and a half and again at two and a half. Now on this two and a half strip on each side I want to cut down to this middle crease so I'm going to line this back up at the four and a half mark let's spin this around because one side is going to be shorter right so it's just easier for me to line up that crease mark that score line all right so I'll start at the top I'm going to score down to this score line right here okay so I'm making my two flaps maybe <laughs> there we go. I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing. Just 
flattening it up at the four and a half mark and going right down that score line and I know it's hard to see and then the score line here okay so can you see what I've done there really easy and I'm just gonna put my trimmer aside real quick and fold up on those score lines so this is the base part of the base of the box Okay, so you can see this is how it's going to come together. So we've just completed one half of the base of the box. So now I'm going to bring in a second piece of my Evening Evergreen, also 8.5 by 11, and this is what I'm going to be cutting this time. Okay, so let me bring my paper trimmer back in. Instead of scoring at 4.5 like I did on that first piece of cardstock, I'm going to score along the 8.5 inch side, I'm going to score down at 4 inches. Not 4.5, four, 4 inches. Okay. But, just like the first one, I'm going to spin it around and score at 2.5 on both sides. two and a half on both sides now okay so four spin it around two and a half and then two and a half okay so now this measures four and a half this measures four I want these four inch rectangles to be cut out so I'm gonna put them back in I'm gonna line it up with my four inch mark and I'm gonna take my cutting blade I'm gonna cut down to that score line I'm going to bring my blade down here. I'm lining up the little um, marker on my blade with the score line here and cut down. Now make sure you've got your four inch rectangles up at the top and your four and a half inch rectangles are down below. Line the first one up with that two and a half inch mark, which is also the same as that score line that's right there. And I'm gonna come down and there's one square save that for another project I'm gonna flip it over line it up at two and a half and same thing cut down to that score mark okay so this is what I have now okay so I'm gonna fold up on those score lines So now it's time to put these pieces together. So the first piece that I cut, this rectangle is four and a half inches. This rectangle is four inches. You want to have this four inch piece in the center, not this way because otherwise it's not going to line up. So make sure your four and a half inch rectangle is to your left, your four inch piece is in the middle and then we are just going to line this up and look how perfectly it fits okay see how this just lines up with the crease line like all perfect so I'm gonna take my glue and put it on this middle panel now you could use um, your adhesive tape whatever you want but I will say when I was taking my um, original box apart because I had used the liquid glue that box did not want to come apart I can tell you that right now okay so I've got everything put together so I have my four and a half inches on the outside and the four on the middle so then these I'm gonna put the middle flaps on the inside these are just gonna come up like this see and that's gonna create the base of our box so I'm going to take my glue and put it on this middle flap. Make sure I get those corners. I like to, uh, when I'm folding my sides up, I like to keep the base on the table so that I know I'm lining up this bottom perfectly and that it's not crooked. That's just me because y'all know I I don't know why, but I tend to do things crooked 
no matter what. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. Get my glue on there. Okay, fold, folding my flap in, right? So I still have glue on this half and this portion, but I'm gonna actually, you could use your glue for this step, but I am gonna use my tear and tape. I'm gonna put a strip of tear tape along the edge of each of these flaps. Didn't do very well tearing that piece, did I? And you'll see why I put this tear and tape on in just a second. So I'm gonna fold this up, fold my flap over, and that tear and tape is sealing these two pieces together, okay? And everything is flush, everything is even. I'm gonna do the same thing. Whoops, see, I just had to get something crooked. Try that again. There we go. So there is the base of my box. And that will hold our uh, five and a half by four and a quarter cards perfectly. Here's one I made the other day. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, I love that card. Um, but see, fits in there with plenty of room. Lid time, let's do the lid. It's not hard. So I'm bringing my paper trimmer back in and I'm gonna cut my third piece of cardstock. So you do need three eight and a half by 11 pieces of uh, cardstock to create this box. I'm gonna cut this down to measure nine by seven. So I'm gonna cut that down, spin it around and cut it at seven. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score at one and a half all the way around. fold up in those creases so you can see what I've got going on here. All right, see? So what we have, I wanna cut these two corners off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You could use your scissors, but I'm gonna use my trimmer. I'm just lining it up at the uh, one and a half inch mark. So I've got my little squares cut. <clears throat> this is the front flap. And you saw I cut over here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just cutting down. I'm not cutting that whole square bit off. Okay, so let me show you. This is the lid. So after you've cut it, you're gonna have two little flaps here. You'll have removed the two corners here and then you've got your two long flaps here, okay? So now I'm gonna take my glue again and I'm gonna glue these two end flaps like so. All right, so now that I have this, this flap is going to get glued on to the back of the box, but I'm gonna come back and do that in a second because um, I wanna decorate things a little bit before I do that, but you could, you could just leave your box plain, but who wants a plain box? Let's get some pretty designer series paper to decorate this. Today I am using our really pretty favored flowers 12 by 12 designer series paper that you can get for free while supplies last uh, until the end of this month, February 2023. Okay, so pretty. So, and 
the colors are listed, right? Hopefully you guys know that, but when you see our designer series paper in our catalogs, it does list the colors that are in the paper. So I just looked and I thought, oh, evening evergreen. I've got lots of that cardstock. So that's what uh, helped me decide what I was going to use for my card box. So now I'm going to bring my paper trimmer back in and cut some pretty designer series paper. So I have a new pack. I have a half opened pack, but I also have a new pack because I want to show you all the pretty patterns in this if you have not seen it yet. And um, this is free with a $60 order here in Canada. This is one of your choices. So pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty. Really nice. Look at that. And this paper also coordinates with the Fragrant Flowers Bundle, which means our dyes work on this paper. I don't have the dyes. In fact, I don't have this bundle. I should probably get it. But um, yeah, so there's dyes that will um, will cut these flowers out. Aren't those um, colors like absolutely gorgeous? Look at that. Mm. Really nice. Look how these colors work. So we have uh, Evening Evergreen, of course. We have, um, we have uh, let's see, Blackberry Bliss. We have our Petal Pink. And we have uh, Fresh Freesia. And we have uh, Calypso Coral. Really, really, really pretty. So for the uh, front and back of this box, I'm going to cut my designer series paper down at four and a quarter. And I'm going to cut it at five and three quarters, and I need two pieces, of course. Then I need another piece. This is going to be for the top, and I'm going to cut this down at three and three quarters. And now I'm going to cut a couple pieces for my um, for my sides. So these are going to measure four and a quarter by three and three quarters. And all these little pieces I'm saving and you're going to see why. And I'm going to do something different with these front flaps. We'll show you that in a momento. So let's get gluing. Let's get gluing. All right. What have I got going on here? All right. That's going to go in the front. All right, using this pattern of paper now, I'm going to cut some borders out using the petal pink side. I'm gonna bring in my little mini die cutting machine. And I have a strip already cut and it's two inches wide. And the reason I'm doing that is I want my strips to be one inch wide but I'm using the um, the basic border dies, and I'm using this pattern, and this cuts both pieces the same, if that makes any sense. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to put this right in the middle, more or less at the you know one inch mark. Okay, kind of, sorta, and then put my plate on. I'm going to try to make sure that's. Kind of straight. And then I'm going to run that through. So you see what I mean now? Both cuts are the same, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to cut this little bit here. 
Okay. Now I have already gone ahead and cut some pieces. Okay. So, um, all I did is I cut this at the five and three quarters mark and then I don't need all of these. I only need, I need these. So these are one by three and three quarters and this is one by five and three quarters. So I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to use my tear and tape. they're not flush to each end and I did that on purpose because um, because of the layers I'm going to be putting on those flaps the layers that I put on here will be flush with these strips okay Isn't that pretty so if I were to glue this on right now let me show you what it would look like <clears throat> this is what it would look like if I just left it at that but wait there's more so I have cut some strips from our um, adhesive paper so this measures one and a quarter by five and three quarters, and these both measure one and a quarter by three and three quarters. So I'm gonna bring this flap in. And this is easier to do without the gluing, but I got ahead of myself. Got ahead of myself, gang. gonna go like this again this is easier way easier to do before you glue those flaps together always advisable to watch my videos in whole before you start crafting kind of like a recipe always good to uh, read the recipe from start to finish before you start same goal for my videos <laughs> oh gosh okay so I'm peeling this off and it's okay that some bits are missing. That's fine. Let's just let's just prop this up on something here. There we go. That's that's the ticket. Cut them in random shapes and make a really pretty mosaic, mosaic, mosaic. And this is an old technique that's been around for a long, long time. And um, I was reminded of it when my sweet friend uh, demonstrated at, um, at my team meeting last month, Melissa. She showed us this technique and I was like, oh my gosh, I love that technique and I've forgotten all about it. So um, yeah, it's a really, really fun, fun technique. I'm actually, I've got some more paper here from the previous box that I've made so I'm going to cut some pieces out of that and I'm just kind of zigzagging and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a whole bunch of pieces you can cut them as big or as small as you want and I'm gonna start placing these pieces starting on the side and moving over and I don't want to um, cover all of that adhesive paper because I'm going to emboss and I'm making sure to leave a space a gap in between every piece I put down so I can go back in now and fill in some of those smaller areas You can do this on card fronts using punches or different dies. There's a lot of ways you can use this technique and I'll probably, knowing me, do another video specifically on this technique and show you guys some fun um, card designs that you can do 
with this. in my silver embossing powder and the embossing powder is going to stick on the adhesive you can take um, a paintbrush and anywhere that there's powder where you don't want it just brush that off watch this this is magic this is beautiful <laughs> pretty so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to both sides and I will speed it up Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my tear and tape and put this lid onto the box. I could use the glue. The glue would work fine. Um, I made a box earlier today, which I'll show you um, in a few minutes. And obviously, I did not I did not glue this together before I did um, the mosaic part. And I did not put the strips on until afterwards either. So I recommend putting these border strips on after you do the embossing. One less place to get embossing powder where you don't want it. All right. Let's pop this on. So I'm just lining this up. and there is the completed box now I have already gone ahead and cut out um, the letters to spell cards using the new um, alphabet alamode dies I think they're called so I glued adhesive paper behind the designer series paper and then ran the dies through and I'm just gonna go and put these on to basic black that I have cut using the deckled rectangle dies. I've decided I want to um, mount this piece on some silver. So I'm bringing in the deckled rectangle dies and I'm gonna cut one that's a little bit bigger than that so that I can layer it. I have gone ahead and I have cut some of the uh, pieces from the designer series paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some of those right on top for my embellishment. Bending this flower just to give it some dimension. And I'm just positioning it right on top of that previously cut flower. And then I have some leaves that I've cut and I've got some dimensionals behind that and I'm just bending the end a little bit. I should have done that to this one too. Look at this, I got leaves stuck everywhere. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna stick a leaf right here and then another one I think right there. And just to add a little bling, I'm pulling in some silver metallic pearls and I'm going to position one in between each of the letters. Okay, and I've just made a bow with some silver 
twine and I am going to put that right here in the corner. I'm just putting some more pearls on the top just to add a little shazam. There is the completed card box. Ready to be filled with greeting cards and envelopes and it is so pretty so much fun to make and of course you can make these as simple as you wish and they'll still be absolutely gorgeous Here's one that I made earlier, same thing except I used gold embossing powder instead of silver and I used a different pattern of designer series paper from that same pattern pack and of course I did my flowers a little bit different, I put some clear wink of Stella, I put a little flower on the center, I added some ribbon and some sequins and then I do have this one filled up with uh, cards and envelopes so you can see how nicely that fits in there I hope you enjoyed today's uh, demonstration. These are really, really fun to make. I've made them so many different ways, um, from the very, very simple to stepped up like today's are. And everybody loves making these, and I hope you give these a try and that you have fun making them at home too. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I appreciate you. Take care, and happy stamping.